I thought it would be a good idea to review the course project since we are now at the point where you will be writing the proposal. So to access the course project assignment, you go you can go to assessments and then assignments. And then you will get to the course project description. So just as a reminder, the course uh, personal writing is centered around a course project that each of you will design. Select something that is of personal interest and or use to yourselves. Um, we've already been working on the course project because it has five components, each is worth 35 points. So the components are listed in the assignment. We've already completed the free writing, component one. We've already completed the visual outlining, component two. Coming up is the proposal, which is component three. Then we will have a rough draft, which you will share with other class participants. That won't be due until November 16th. And then the final will be due on December 12th. So those are the five components. Um, I'm really open to anything that you want to do. Uh, as far as length, I don't have a maximum or a minimum page limit, but I would suggest that you stay with not more than four to six pages. Um, if you want to do something much longer than that, like say you want to write a memoir that would be several chapters long, I would suggest just doing like the first half of a chapter or the first short chapter, something like that. You could do a portion of your project that you're imagining. So in the proposal you could outline something that would be a book length work but say you're just going to work on the introduction or chapter one or something like that so um, it's just to re be remembered I know many of you would like to write really lengthy pieces but uh, for especially for the peer review um, part where we have the rough draft for review coming up we want to not have something too lengthy because um, it's just would be difficult uh, to be certain that everyone in the class would have the time needed to devote to closely read, say, 20 pages. So um, I would suggest staying under six pages if you can. Obviously, you want at least a page. Now, theoretically, it could be only a page long. So I took a class, I think it was two summers ago, about microfiction, which was actually really, really difficult for me because I tend to write long. So we had to like tell a story in a hundred words and things like this. So, but sometime, if you ever feel like it, you can look up microfiction and you can see what I'm talking about. So, I mean, theoretically, someone could have something that is only a page long and it could be really awesome. Like, they could do a collage or maybe have some kind of, I don't know, word art or something. Or even um, a really detailed outline for a book length work, which has descriptions and so forth, could work. Okay, so I'm open to anything for the final project. Just have it be something that's important and useful to yourself. Okay, back to the assignment. Let's make sure I covered everything. All right, the final project is due to me on December 12th. It's really close to when final grades are due. That's another reason why I'm saying to keep it, you know, six pages-ish or less. And my examples for the final project are a mini memoir, a mini autobiography, 
or it could be the first chapter of a memoir, the first chapter of an autobiography, a letter or a series of letters, and um, that depends what would what would be needed to the, for that. It depends on how you're setting it up. So you could write like five letters that told a story. You could write a letter and like the letters we read that have kind of like metaphorical meaning that relates to other things besides just letters. Um, a diary entry or a series of diary journal entries. I think a series of di diary or journal entries maybe would have some kind of a frame like an introduction to conclusion. Same thing with the letters. You know, it just depends on how you're going to set it up or if they can stand alone. You might want to have at least a few sentences of introduction. An autoethnography, which is a lot like a memoir or an autobiography, it's more uh, focused on culture. So I think of it more as being a cultural sketch of oneself. And we had some practice in that class, so you could extend that. A cultural portrait or sketch, a multi-genre project. I've got some examples of those in our in our course materials, but you are not at all um, restricted by the samples that I do have available, if you have something else in mind. And then an oral history from an elder in your community. It's basically an interview, and you would then write that up for future generations. Uh, I'm going to have how-to information about that posted in the archival research folder coming up. And I'm open to anything else as well. So just um, the main thing that I would caution you on is most of you are like super enthusiastic. So don't think that this has to be like the total thing you ever do on the topic or the area that you're focusing and think of it more as a beginning and just a start to something that you could keep working on in the years to come. All right, submission requirements, sh sh I'm sorry, submission requirements. Uh, we've been using the discussion boards and then the final will be due in the drop box, which is under assessments and assignments. And I've got the file formats and so on got information here about mediums. So most of you will create some sort of document for your final writing project, but anything saved and openable in a digital environment is acceptable. For example, a podcast or video is okay as long as it is recorded and openable in a digital environment. I also need to understand what message is being conveyed, and so a short reflection accompanying the project is helpful in the event the project is in a medium other than alphabetic Example, personal writing participant completes a digital video for the final project. A video is created and uploaded to the assignment box along with a short one-half page reflection describing the message intended to be conveyed in the video. Format. Format should adhere to the convention of your choice. Whatever it is you choose should match that, that type of item that you're producing. A traditional blog post will probably look different than an Instagram post. A tweet will look different from a Facebook post. post. A longhand diary or journal entry will look different from a handwritten letter. If sources are used and they are not required, they must be cited using the documentation style of your choice that is appropriate to the purpose. Your documentation style of choice and your formatting choice would best match to be consistent. And then just a reminder to save everything in your own workspaces for backup. So that's just, especially if you're working on something that you want to continue working on or that you could use in another environment. Okay, that's just a reminder about the course project. Thank you.